today on The Real. We couldn't love them more. Adrian and Israel are getting married. We're here. The best decision I've ever made. I get to be a part of a dream that she's always had. A love like ours only happens once in a lifetime. Celebrate the big day with us. Then, in today's Girl Chat, the feelings around the country one week after the election. Several students at a middle school in Royal Oak, Michigan, were caught on video chanting <laughs> on the real. day on the reel because today is the first day we sit at the table with Mrs. Adrian Houghton. <laughs> she got married! Yes! Adrian that sounds got awesome. married over the weekend in a beautiful ceremony mm -hmm. in Paris. How are you feeling, my darling? I feel amazing. Are I just you? like hearing that out loud. Yes. Hope yes. again, Mrs. Houghton. Mrs. Adrian Houghton. <laughs> I like it. Okay? <laughs> Well, you know what? Later on in the show, we'll be taking you to Paris as we show you everything, the stunning details yes. of her big day. It's incredible. You don't want to miss it, seriously. Oh, great. Now, Monica, you've been married to your husband, Shannon, for six years. Right. What advice can you give Adrian as she begins her life together with Israel? Uh-oh. You know, that's a tricky one because every couple, to me, in my opinion, we're all different. Yes. And we require different things. But the one thing I have learned, because it does get difficult at times, mm -hmm. there are patches where it's just bliss and amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's life. It comes with the territory. But the right. reality is that you keep God first. He's at the head. Then you guys, other people out, no matter what their title may be, yeah. is the one thing that I've learned. You know, because there was a time where you're taking in so many opinions and you think that's what you're supposed to do because right. there are people that matter to you. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that only you two said I do. So however it Amen. goes and whatever happens is only between you guys and you don't owe the world an explanation. I love that. You know, I love you know. All right, Monica, another really important question. Uh -oh. Are you ready for some girl chat? Yeah! Oh, Always. You... Always. Always. Okay. Yeah, First up, it's been a week since Donald Trump was elected president of the United States. And whether you're celebrating or mourning, it's important to take stock of the mood of the country right now. According to an article in Time, the Southern Poverty Law Center has counted over 200 incidents of harassment Gets me emotional. I don't know. Sorry. Reported since the election. So the okay, I got that. For example, several students at a middle school in Royal Oak, Michigan, were caught on video chanting. <laughs> I'm so sorry, you guys. I didn't mean to get this emotional. About it's this. okay. Right. It, it's okay. You feeling what half of the country is feeling, Jeannie. Do not worry. The video <laughs> chanted "Build that wall" during their lunch period. Okay. Um, Monica. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay. Okay, yeah. we got it, we got each other. Yeah. Also, officials at the University of Oregon are investigating an incident of students allegedly wearing blackface on campus. And in New York City, swastikas were drawn on several doors in a residence hall at a school where three Jewish women live, as well as on a sidewalk in a Brooklyn Jewish community. Now, at a time when our country should be trying to be unified, why do you think these incidents are happening so frequently, ladies? This is sad. It's devastating. It's really sad. It, it's frustrating. It's, yes, and I think it's just so sad because, you know, um, my parents left Vietnam because there was communism happening. They were judge, being judged 
for their class. They were being judged just because they couldn't control the governmental conditions. So they fled to America because the one place in the entire world where every single person has a voice. And so, you know, I'm 37 years old and I've been so um, excited over every new election because it means a rebirth for our country. It means so many different things. I love fresh new voices in our White House because it just, it's new leaders. They're the only country where we have that sense of freedom. Yeah. And I've just never seen this type of reaction across America. Well, I'm gonna tell you something, Jeannie. I've studied black history. I've got people in my family that know black history that have told me, you know, things that this has happened. This has been happening for a long time, okay? Yeah. And now America is getting a wake-up call. Yeah. It's getting a wake-up call that we need to uh, have a, a serious, not only a discussion, but we need to understand why this stuff is happening. And it's not right. I mean, you know, this is a democracy. And part of democracy is sometimes your candidate wins and sometimes your candidate loses. Right. So if you own the part where the candidate is losing, you got to understand why and you try to mobilize. You know, protest is different than harassment. I want, in my opinion, yes. it's a big difference. Yes. So what's happening here? It's yeah, harassment. harassment yeah. That's not protesting. That's harassment. And this is the reason why we have a show like this that I'm very proud to be a part of so that we can have discussions like this, so that we can have experts come on and explain to people the difference between what is a harassment and what is a protest. Because right. these are harassments to people. We are all here in the United States of America, no matter what, and you should have the freedom to yeah. express yourself, but not in a harassing way. Yeah. You should still be respectful to everyone. And I think that no matter what happens, you can disagree with people, you can have different beliefs. Uh, you shouldn't disrespect people. And I think it's incredibly disrespectful <laughs> to draw swastikas. It is incredibly disrespectful right. to chant, build the wall. Granted, it becomes difficult when you have a president who makes it okay to do things like that or empowers people to think that that is okay to say or do with the build the wall situation. I don't think right. he's walked around drawing swastikas anywhere, but, <laughs> but for the build the wall thing, I think um, that has to be so hurtful. If you're a Latino or a Mexican in that school, how that must make you feel must be right. awful. Right. So well, you know, in a recent, I'm gonna tell you something. In a recent 60 Minutes interview, when asked about reports of racial slurs and personal threats against African Americans, Latinos, and gays by some of his supporters, Trump said he was saddened to hear about that and that they should stop it because he wants to bring the country together. And now, this is, this is why. Yeah, I applaud that. You have course. to applaud, yeah. you know, that. It's, you guys. Okay. Well, Lonnie, and uh, I have to say that call myself an optimist, mm -hmm. whether, you know, you like it or not, but... Don't say me. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just saying in general, I want to believe that we have more good people in this country than bad. However, it's now time for us good people to not be silenced. Yeah. We have to yes. stand up for what's right and help our brothers and sisters. Absolutely. I don't want us to be divided yeah, because of all of this stuff anything. that's happening. Now, more than ever, it's time for us to unite. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And you know, I feel like this election has also given way to a lot that was already there, clearly, mm -hmm. but it was hidden. So what this election has done has made people that are comfortable with racism and things of that nature, who initially felt like, okay, I'll keep that to myself yeah. or amongst my core group. Exactly. It has now become widespread yeah. and accepted. Mm -hmm. And I think that through these types of conversations and these, um, the recognition that there is a problem, that means that we must unify. We can no yes. longer ignore what has to be done. Mm -hmm. We must unify because now, people that have never used the term minority, have realized they are one. Right, right. And for wow. so long, a lot of people that were part of the minority, myself included, um, a lot of times we knew, we grew up understanding mm -hmm. it. Having a grandmother raised in Noonan, Georgia. Okay, it's not, tell it. Yeah, 
it got really real and stayed that way for a long time. We're having children now that can go to a school where my mother was not allowed to use their water fountain. Mm -hmm. You realize that some change has happened, but not yet enough. Right. And you have these amazing groups of people that haven't had a reason to speak. Mm -hmm. Now we all got a reason to speak. Exactly. Right. Because when you, exactly. when you don't, um, I tell my kids this, if you don't contribute to the solution, you're a part of the problem. Mm -hmm. That is in that. silence as well. And I really want to commend Mr. Trump for saying those words when the world needs to hear it more than ever. Stop. We need to hear a leader that is making the people feel protected and safe. That's the number one quality that I look forward to in my president, whoever who it may be. And I really do believe, and, and I pray, that Mr. Trump is hearing not just his own voice, because I think we know he's such a confident person because he hears his voice most, which is strong in some areas. But right now, I hope that God is shifting him so he's hearing the voices of America. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The people. Yeah. Well, the people. I mean, we hope, but yeah. I just want to talk about the people, though, yeah. you know? And there are many people who want to speak out in protest, so they've started wearing the safety pins to quietly announce themselves as friends to minorities who feel the threatened by the election result. I love this. The pins indicate they're safe among the person wearing it and that they stand by them. Now, even celebrities like Patrick Stewart, I love him, he's love posted him. a picture wearing the pin to show his support, you know? I think that's awesome. I think that's really, really awesome that people are standing up and saying, look, I stand with you. Mm -hmm. and, and guys, it doesn't have to be that you are one of the minorities, by the way. I think there's nothing more beautiful than being like, oh, I'm not affected by that, but I still care. Absolutely. Right. Like, it doesn't have to be mm -hmm. that, oh, this, this affects my home or my children, but that, let's say, if Asians were being attacked or something, I would stand with you just because I care. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. you know what? I, I'll say this, too. I think... The good people that you were talking about, they're the frustrated good people. Mm. They're the people that feel like no matter what they do, change is not happening. It's mm. not happening the way that they want it to. It's not happening for a lot of them, they feel, period. So I think the frustration stopped them from getting to the ballots, which in turn hurt them more. Yeah. But the feeling at yeah. the time was that I'm not going. The driver that drove me here said, I don't vote. Well, you know, I don't do that. What's really funny, though, too, it's even it's been reported, even Donald Trump said, I didn't think I'd make it past October 2015. He didn't know. <laughs> you know, and so that's why I think I always have takeaways. I think you have to be careful about what you're doing. This is not a game. This yeah. is the world now. Right. So you have to be very, very careful. You have to take people seriously. You know, this is not a reality show. This ain't, this ain't a TV show. We can edit. You can edit what I say. Right. But now, this is, this real is the real, this the real yeah. test. And you know what? It was funny because when he met with President Obama, you see how he got humble, okay? Because President Obama told him some stuff. It was like... Uh-oh. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it was a different it, feel, right? Because right? they thought, because, different... you know, the news media was saying, oh, it, they are all, they'll probably only meet for, like, 15 minutes. No, they met for an hour and a half. Let me tell you something about President Obama, because I have sat in a meeting with him. He is a serious <laughs> man. He talks about things, and he probably told Trump some things, and Trump, like, he came, walked out of that meeting, sat there with his hands, and he was like, Obama's a good man. Like, that's all I need to hear. Yeah. That's all I need to hear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, I would feel so frustrated hearing that after, I mean, not even, but like if, if you go an entire, you know, election period saying opposite and then you come out and say that, I'd be like, boo, which one is it? Well, what yes, I'm saying but is... But we can change. And, and just like us, you guys, even us here, at the, I'm using this as an example, but we didn't think or we would always have dreamed for a talk show, I'm sure. But we didn't think or expect for it to happen on the date that it did when God blessed us with this opportunity. Correct. And the day that we got called and said, we have a talk show, immediately, I'm sure, you had a discussion with yourself of realizing Adrian, Tamara, Lonnie, Monica, your voice is going to be heard and judged yeah. and criticized yeah. and, and processed by millions of people. So it stepped you up to an occasion to be a little bit more mindful about your role now in the world. I pray that for Melania and Donald Trump. Yeah. Before we get back into Girl Chat, we wanted to pay tribute to respected journalist Gwen Eiffel, who passed away at the age of 61 after fighting a battle against endometrial cancer. 
Eiffel was one of the first African American women to ever host a political TV talk show. Yes. Wow. In addition, Eiffel and Judy Woodruff became the first women to host a primetime news program as co anchors of PBS NewsHour. I think that's just amazing. Yes. Um, she quoted, when I was a little girl watching programs like this, I would look up and not see anyone who looked like me in any way. No women, no people of color. I'm very keen about the fact that a little girl now watching the news, when they see me and Judy sitting side by side, it will occur to them that that's perfectly normal. Wow. I like that, that it's perfectly normal, that it won't seem like any big breakthrough at all. We here at The Real send our condolences and love to Eiffel's friends and family during this time. Wow. I applaud her. Wow. What a... She will be missed. She was yes. a great, uh, just a great journalist. She's one of those old school journalists, mm -hmm. you know, and when she covered the debates, you know, they didn't mess with Gwen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like they respected her. She did her job and, you know, now she's with our ancestors. So God bless you. Yes. Gwen. Yeah, she definitely paved the way for people like us to mm -hmm. do what we do. Yes. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Gwen. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Up next, CoverGirl just revealed that the face of their newest campaign is a YouTube beauty blogger named Noura Afia. Afia is featured in the ad campaign wearing a hijab, a first for any model in this company's history. It's amazing. Wow. Yes. CoverGirl. Yeah. Afia has said that she grew up feeling insecure about wearing a hijab and never expected to see someone of the Muslim faith represented on such a large scale. This hit me right at home when I saw this because you guys know I love traveling the world because mm -hmm. I'm obsessed with culture. And that hijab represents so many things. I think Muslims in this country are so underrepresented. Yes, um, Yes. I, there are 1.6 billion Muslims in this world. By the end of this century, you guys, there will be more Muslims than Christians across the globe. Right. And this was so beautiful to me because, as you know, we all grew up looking at magazines, watching television, and just like Miss Eiffel said, we need to see representation of ourselves. Mm -hmm. I never saw Asian Americans across any you know, cosmopolitan, cosmopolitan Vogue magazine, mm. uh, not even on news, thanks to Wendy Dakuda. I saw you and I knew it was possible. <laughs> but other than that, this is the first. Yeah. There's so many across yeah. the world. 1.6 billion women and men and children are going to see this and know that it is possible to be respected and to be accepted as one. Yeah. And I think for a lot of people, some may say, well, as a Christian, how can you, you know, how can you support something like this? I think, once again, like I said earlier, it's about respect. It's about it's culture. It's about equality. Mm -hmm. It's about culture. And I serve a God that's about love. Oh. And I think that's, oh. that's, that's what I'm about. I serve a God that loves everyone, that is all about respect and loving one another. He'll so move I think, a mountain. He'll use you if you let him. You I tell you like that. But you, right. you have to start somewhere, and it has to start with love and respect. And if you can... Um, you know, separate from yourself and say for a moment, you know, we're just trying to love on people and be good to people and show that uh, we should love people regardless of what they do. You may not have the same belief, but you still love them and treat them with respect. Uh, that's what it's all about. That's yeah. okay. One of my favorite things about working on this show is how close we have become and how all of our lives have become intertwined. Mm -hmm. Our family came together last weekend to celebrate one of our own, Miss Adrian, and she married the love of her life. It's real. with love, laughter, joy, and the most beautiful wedding I have ever seen. Thank we can't you. wait to show you how it all went down. But first, I think there's someone, Adrian, who Who's should be here. There is. All right, you guys, so this is the first time I'm actually going to see any of this footage myself, and I just can't watch it alone. So please join me in welcoming my husband, Israel Houghton. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the girl chat table. Thank hola, you. hola. Thank you. It's a oh pleasure. Oh my gosh, look, it's your husband. Wow. Wow. Oh. Just saying it out loud sounds awesome. Thank you. So okay, fun. Israel, are you ready to relive your wedding day? 
I am ready. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> all right. The time has come. Without further ado, we all haven't seen anything. Mm, no. Neither. Take a look at part one of Israel and Adrian's wedding in Paris. After a 12-hour flight, we finally arrived in France. Next, we set sail for a delicious and celebratory dinner where we toasted the happy couple. We're in Paris! Are we going gorillas? It's going to be amazing. As my kids would say, it's going to be lit. <laughs> it means so much to me. I, I am marrying the man of my dreams. Oh. And I couldn't be happier. And I, I, uh, just to do it here in Paris, which is such a magical and special place for us. Tomorrow is going to be a celebration of that love. Let's have fun. Let's have a good time. We are in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> After a long day of travel and celebrating, it was time for bed. Tomorrow is the big day. So it was really important to me that the women in my family um, pray over me. I have like amazing women in my life and they've been through so much and they're strong and like kind and they're good to people. And um, if I could be half of the wife that those women are, um, I will be so blessed. Literally, like, everybody in that circle has known me from the day I was born. Can you believe it, guys? <laughs> I'm the baby of the family. <laughs> that was so emotional, blessing, and awesome. And my sister kept her eyelashes on, and that was really important, too. God was good in that way, too. Um, but yeah, I think keeping God at the center of everything we do is so important. I think even with um, abstaining from sex, you know, it gives you time to think and find other ways to connect. I decided to write um, love letters to Israel, 11 of them. And so I've been given a letter um, at different times. Uh, she gave me one when we landed. I heard that you yeah. cried a lot. I did cry quite <laughs> a bit. He bought me a typewriter back in the day and also bought me a typewriter paper that says Adrian Eliza by loan. And I'm like, well, I'm not gonna be Adrian Eliza by loan anymore. I might as well use up all this paper and type him 11 love letters. 10 is gonna pretty much say. So like you would tell me, breathe, take in every moment. This is the beginning of the rest of our lives. You are my first and you will be my only. Today I give you my heart. My soul, everything that I am, the good and the bad, I give you the rest of my life. Oh my God. I love you. Meet me downstairs. You are the man of my dreams. I'll see you in the organza room. I'll be the gal in white, your bride. Meet me downstairs. I will be the gal dressed in white. Yes. I love you. So I sent that to him, so that'll be the last one. I can only assume that I'll get an 11th one at some point number 11, and number 11 is my vows. We've been very fortunate that we have a great team around us and coordinators and family mostly that makes it real easy. And they know that Adrian and I want, you know, a, as flawless a ceremony as we can. And so everybody's really working you know, to that end and keeping us chill. Like, I don't have to impress anybody. Like, everybody here, if I look crazy, if the flowers came out ugly, if downstairs I go down there and everything's terrible, no one there is gonna judge. Most importantly, I'm not stressed about what I look like because, first of all, well, I got a great team. Know, what is your look? I wanted to go supernatural. Mm -hmm. I think on your wedding day, you should look like you. Mm -hmm. I don't wanna look like I have on 20 pounds of makeup, which sometimes I do like. <laughs> but for your wedding, I wanted to look innocent pretty. Mm -hmm. You know, like innocent sexy. Mm -hmm. So the hair is sexy, but the face is innocent. But this lash is like, yeah. <laughs> um, I haven't seen her all day. I inquired with Ray, who said she's happy with everything. So she's happy. Hello? Hey, okay, so I left my shoes in the organza room. Hold it. Jeannie, your nails are sharp. Can you open that and see if I have a veil inside of there somewhere? For sure. I can't find my veil. I, it was, I did see an envelope. Ooh, yeah, sure. Chanel. Like, oh, like this. Ooh, delicious. Yeah. Okay. 
we don't know where my shoes are. It's not, it's like, well, where is my bail? Uh, can we cut it off of the dress and create one? Oh my god, oh my god it's two layers. So I thought it looked like a lot. How long are you guys making it? We don't we know, don't we're really just know, trying to get it up to cash. So where is my bail? So happy wife, happy life. I'm just, I'm just, gonna gonna just go straight through, through it. Yep. Do the top. It'll give you the. You have a comb? Where was it? They, they got it. it. They got it. Yay! Oh! Wow. Thank God. <laughs> We just got back from Adrian and Israel's magical wedding weekend in Paris. It was perfect. Are you ready to see how the rest of the night went down? Yeah! All right, so are we. Let's see Adrian and Israel say, I do. Oh my God, I'm really late. Rise, please. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here today. Thank you for being patient. We had a situation of a disappearing veil that we've now located. <laughs> I know that you have some vows for one another that you wrote personally. I wish. I wish to see my love, my love tonight, tonight. I've said it before, yet it bears repeating. You embody what grace actually looks like to me. I wish, I wish to be, to be with you, with you forever. Adrian, I understand that you also have some personal vows that you would like to make to Israel. When I met you, I truly had no idea how much my life would change years later. But then, how could I have known a love like ours only happens once in a lifetime? Israel, I love loving you. When I fell in love with you, I fell in love with all of you. I fell in love with the great in you, and I fell in love with the bad you see in yourself. But the bad you see, is the great that I see in you. Because I love every part of you. And today, I vow to always love you this way. Always. Israel, let me ask you, first of all, do you take Adrian as your wife, as your own flesh, to love her even as Christ loves the church? To protect her, to care for her, for the rest of your life, if so, say I do. I do. Will you please face Adrian? Adrian, let me ask you, do you take Israel as your husband, submitting yourself to him as unto the Lord, showing reverence to him as the head of your union for the rest of your lives, if so, say I do. I do. If I may have the rings, please, and repeat these words after me. With this ring. With this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Ghost. And of the Holy Ghost. If you will take this ring, please, and yes. place it upon Israel's finger. Yes. With this ring. With this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. The Son. And of the Holy Ghost. And of the Holy Ghost. Israel, you may kiss the bride. Ladies and gentlemen, I now present unto you Mr. and Mrs. Israel Bote. Adrian and Israel, I wish you many years of love and many blessings. I love you so much. Mwah. Let's have a good time tonight. We're celebrating love. I know that Adrian and Israel really appreciate everybody coming the long way and you all are going to be on tv so if any of you are on probation please let us know <laughs>
for the first time ever, we present to you Mr. and Mrs. Israel Holton. nothing but the best, and she is going to do great as being a married woman. Thank you for showing me a storybook wedding and for welcoming us into your lives. I love you guys. Wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Oh, I just got emo. Thank you guys so much for being there with us. You guys have no idea how much it means to us. Um, you can say something. <laughs> I always talk. I, I'm just reliving this. Is I know it just happened like amazing. less than 48 hours ago. I, know. I can't believe it. Wait, really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Friday. I've so been married for three days. Three <laughs> days. That's why I'm looking like this. We just came from Paris. <laughs> <laughs> We're having a ball reminiscing about Adrian and Israel's wedding and our weekend in Paris. Yes. Now, something that I certainly didn't expect <laughs> was that Lonnie and I would actually <laughs> carry Adrian's train down to the ceremony. Yes. Yeah. I know. I'm so glad. I'm you guys so had dumb, that you guys. Covered. I got out the elevator right there, <laughs> and I originally thought that my brother-in-law Jared and my dad. We're gonna come back around to carry the I don't know what happened. The, the moments were moving so fast uh -huh. that we're literally about to walk, and you were carrying my train coming down the hall and I down was the elevator. Stepping yes, on your train. yes, you were. She kept I'm glad like, somebody she was holding kept the train. Stepping on it. But people, first of all, okay, <laughs> to defend myself. Okay? I'm like, I don't have nobody to carry. But it. I wasn't expecting to do it, what? and I and y'all know I've been on detoxing, and so this is my first time going to Paris <laughs> drinking. So I was lit by the oh time, my God. and I'm like. <laughs> She kept yes. stepping, Why? and then they were like frick and frack. Well, arguing. because I was upset you... that Lonnie kept stepping on your train. But and it then... was heavy. I want to say that to everyone. It was. No. It felt like a hundred pounds. It really yeah, did. Thank, thank you to Ryan really and Walter. They made me like a beautiful this. train. Yes. It was hand beaded. What I didn't but know. But it was heavy. Was that there was carpet. So every step I took, the hand beating kept catching onto the carpet. So they had to hold it up Look the whole time. Look how high I was holding. Why are you Look, holding yes. it? Why is it over your head? Because you kept yelling at me. You like, you keep tapping on my train. You said, so I was like, okay, let me hold it up high. And it was hurting my arms. You know, I ain't been working out. I was lit. I was like, where is Tam Tam? Help me, Tam Tam. I could not let Adrian go down the aisle like that, so I had to step in. No, so couldn't let you go out it. like that. Oh, yeah. so thank, thank you. Thank you. I helped you, Lonnie. Yes, you did. Yes. Thank you very I much. Did. That's what you're supposed to do. Right. <laughs> we did. A, we did well, right? We did well. This is what you know? I had walking behind me. <laughs> yeah, you behind her, though, so we were like arguing. We were, we were like, you can pick it up. You pick it up. It's heavy. Help go me. to the right. Go to the left. I was yeah, like, what's was happening? Like, back but we got there. it done, though. That's all that matters. I wanted. I wanted to make sure that it looked nice because I knew that there were going to be pictures. Taken. Yes. Yes. And she couldn't have it like all bundled up I like that. I just want to say, when you said you didn't have anybody to do it, I would have did it. I would have got myself together yes. and I got me some help and we did it. Yes, you okay? did. We did. Thank you. I love you. They made it happen. Now, Israel, I need to ask you did anything happen at the wedding that you did not expect? Uh, <laughs> wow. I would say, um, okay, so. The ceremony went amazingly. The the eleventh envelope I was not expecting to be the vows, so that kind of oh. took my breath away for sure. Um, the reception was amazing. All that was fantastic. Then we finally, finally, finally went upstairs, and uh, uh oh, you understand we've what? waited for this uh -oh. moment. Uh -oh. uh, so, Let me know about it. Uh -oh. so, uh -oh. Lonnie. So I opened the door. I had to kick Shane Shane out because he was following us That's on the camera. Way. I'm Thanks, like, you got to go. Love you, Shane. Thank you for following us this far, but your time is up now. So <laughs> feel free to go to bed. Um, and when I opened the door, I walked in and I saw these gigantic 
portraits all over the suite of this beautiful woman, um, uh, not wearing much at all. <laughs> yeah! Um, they, they're called um, boudoir photos. Boudoir photos, right? Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, it was um, inspirational, to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> I had put them all over. What I love best is you didn't know anything about them. No clue. But they but all did. We they, all did. did. they approved them. They picked which ones with my best <laughs> angle. Yep. But I did make a big mistake. Those photos, yep. those boudoir pictures I can't even were in this. a cardboard envelope and I left them in the back of the car service that took us to the airport. So now I'm panicking the airport because I'm like, you don't understand, babe. You don't know what those photos are. This could be a real no, problem. No. It wasn't even that, you guys. I called Adrian. I was like, Adrian, Adrian, I got some news for you. The sexy photos are loose. Because they <laughs> no, were in a that's car. That's not funny. And she <laughs> literally, no, she didn't even say nothing, you guys. The phone went click. Yeah. And all I, of a sudden, I heard Israel I on. I couldn't take it. So Israel was like, she's kind of stressed out right now. What is it? What can I help with? I'm like, you're not supposed to know. I don't want to talk to you. Let me talk to Adrian. No, you passed the phone. That line yeah, got yeah. on the phone. Yeah, I took care of it, OK? Because <laughs> I knew. You did. You did. You did that. You Shout out to Rhonda at The Real for helping me Rhonda, out because Rhonda. it was a big mess. But we got it we done. Got we photos. got the photos. Thank you, Rhonda. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. you know what? <laughs> the These stories are crazy. I, when, I, when I tell you that even not being there, I feel like I was there. Yes. Yes. It like take you guys through like a whole walk of everything okay. that was happening. Monica, you know That's, why? Why? Because this is called The Real. We keep it real. Yeah. <laughs>